Okay, so um, don't mind my hat and all that stuff. I didn't plan on doing this video, but I want to show you guys some ex at least one example of each area that you're going to see um, with the central limit theorem. Um, you guys at Nightingale, my, my uh, statistics students at Nightingale. So you're going to see these three scenarios if when you're in your central limit theorem week. So you got the basic uh, situation and there are other videos that you can understand the central limit theorem through. Um, but I just wanted to at least do an example. So you want to be able to identify which one to use and when. So you're, you should be familiar with this notation to indicate you know, your, um, your distribution, right? This is, you know, the basic when you select one, this is normally distributed where your mean is mu and your standard deviation is sigma, but then you might be asked about the means or the averages. And so your standard, uh, your, your distribution is, you know, X bar following means and averages is normally distributed and your, you know, mean of your, your, uh, you, you know, your overall mean of your averages so, you know, kind of stays the same as your original, and then you know the the standard error uh, will, will will affect your standard distribution. So, and then if you're doing your sums, this is your distribution as well. So this is like the basic idea. You know, if, if you know this, then you can pretty much answer any question. It's just a matter of when to do which one, if that makes sense. Now I'm going to show you using the graphing calculator. This is not my computer that has the application on the computer, so I'm going to have to like, you should be able to do these calculations on your graphing calculator yourself, because I have sent out multiple videos using normal CDF, but I'll, you know, kind of like do this <laughs> for now, just to kind of get this out of the way, at least so you see examples. So, all right, um, shrink my face down a little bit here. Okay, so we can read the problem. So here's the situation. This was just a random example that I had from you know, this particular book. The amount of pollutants are found in waterways near large cities, um, and it's normally distributed with a mean, and actually, let me get blue, mean, here's my mean, right? Uh, 9.6 ppm, and standard deviation of 1.8. Eight randomly selected large cities are studied round all answers to four decimal places where possible. This is important too. You want to know how you're rounding because if you don't input it based on how you're asked to round, obviously you're going to get it wrong, right? Um, okay, so let's start with part A. What is the distribution of X, right? X is, you know, it's like you're, you're and I guess, I wish that I did pick it up. Maybe I could do another example, but this would be, you know, what is this distribution well, I already kind of wrote this down, but what is the distribution of X, your simple basic distribution? I'm gonna actually just write that up here. What is your distribution of X? Um, that's not your sums, right? That's not your means, that's your, your basic distribution. So it's normally distributed and the mean is given to you as 9.6 and your standard deviation is given to you as 1.8. Remember, it's always mean and then standard deviation. That's the order in which you you put this uh, in normal distribution. What is the distribution of X bar? X bar represents your averages, your means, your averages, right? What is the distribution of the means and the averages? You know, the mean stays the same and then you have your standard error here, sigma X over the square root of N. So um, my, my mean will be 9.6 of this distribution and my standard deviation is going to be changed into the standard error 1.8 divided by the square root of n. n is your sample size over the square root of 8. So I'm going to actually rewrite that um, because they're not going to take it like that. But round everything to four decimal places. So we're going to just um, x bar has a distribution that's normal, 9.6 comma. And then you know 1.8 divided by the square root of 8 is 0. Point, I'm going to take four digits, right? Six three, six, four, oops, six, sorry guys, let me move that over so I could uh, reach it, nine point, zero point six, three, six, four, okay, there, all right, um, go ahead and do that if you need to, pause it, but that's what I'm inputting here, right, don't leave it like this, you want to simplify it, but that's how I found this number, now, 
here's my question. What is the probability? Anytime I hear probability, I'm automatically thinking of area under a curve, right? And you know you're going to deal with a normal distribution curve. So I'm going to end up using normal CDF because it's asking for probability, correct? That one randomly selected city's waterway will have less than 9.3 ppm pollutants. So if you've seen my other videos, you should know how to input this into the calculator. If you, if you don't, then you need to go back and look at those videos because I'm using the graphing calculator. Um, so let's start with the distribution that we're going to use. I'm selecting one. I'm not going to use the averages. I'm going to use the original distribution when I'm selecting one. So this doesn't change. And again, probability. Find the probability that one randomly selected will have a will have a whatever uh, waterway will have whatever that is less than 9.3 ppm. So this is my probability. Normal CDF. I'm doing area to the left of 9.3. So when I input this, it's mean standard deviation. Ooh, sorry guys. It's um leftmost part of my area, which I'm going to use a large negative number, rightmost part of my area, mean, and standard deviation, right? I'm using the first situation here because I'm only selecting one. So this is the distribution that I'm using. That's basically what matches this, right? This should match this, as long as this is matching the proper distribution. Um, here, I will show that on my calculator. I don't have my so here, <laughs> uh, on top of VARS is distribution. So I'm going second VARS to pull up um, all these things that are popping up. Um, on my normal CDF is number two. I have an old school calculator, so it doesn't ask me left or right, but the leftmost value is negative one, you know, large number. Comma is above the seven. And you guys should know how to input this because I've done this on other videos with my pretty application, um, 9.3 comma 9.6 comma 1.8 and I get 0.43 uh, uh, okay rounding to four right I'm rounding to four digits to the right of the decimal so 0 0.4338 approximately okay and now they don't ask it for um percentage it's just probability if they ask for the percentage then I would change that to a percent um all right now my next question, for the eight cities, more than one, find the probability that the average amount of pollutants is less than 9.3 ppm. So these are very similar. I mean, if I were to draw the curve, it, it looks very much the same. It's normally distributed. It's an area to the left of 9.3. But the distribution has changed because now I'm looking at averages, which means that I'm using this distribution here. Remember, this is going to match what comes at the end of my normal CDF. So here, let's uh, keep it in, keep it in green. Probability that the averages will be less than 9.3 is equal to normal CDF. Again, area to the left, so a large negative number. I usually use a lot of it. Um, right most part of your area, and then the mean, which should match this distribution, 9.6, and the standard deviation, which should match this because I'm doing this distribution, 0 0.6364, okay? And then approximately, so I'm gonna do the same thing, second bars, down to normal CDF, negative uh, whatever, large negative number, 9.3, right? Comma, 9.6, comma, and then 0.6364, and then whatever the heck that says, 0.3187, approximately 0 0.3187 is my probability. So, <clears throat> you know, it, uh, I'm gonna do one more, I'm gonna have to make up a problem because this one didn't have the sums, but I'm gonna do a sums case too, but you know, again, it's not hard. 
the process is repetitive, but you have to identify which distribution you're using now that you're dealing with the central limit theorem and you might be selecting more than one, right? All right, here is another example that I wanna do um, just cause it shows that extra piece. Cause we talked about this, we talked about this. I wanna talk about this. So now we'll do an example where you have to identify, you know, all, all of them. So um, here we go. Suppose that the amount of time, let me get my blue pen color. Suppose that the amount of time that students spend studying in the library in one sitting is normally distributed, that's important, with a mean of 44 minutes and a standard deviation of 18 minutes. A researcher observed 10 students who entered the library to study. Round answers to four decimal places were necessary if we have to round. What is, so here, here are my questions first. What is the distribution of X, right? So I'm gonna go through each one. Distribution of X here. So let's, let's refer back to what I have written here. X, you're basic, you're selecting one. The normal distribution is basically just the mean and the standard deviation. You're not really changing anything. So the distribution of X, let's put that in yellow. The distribution of X is normal distribution where the mean is 44 and the standard deviation is 18, right? That's my first one. Um, second one, what is the distribution of X bar? What does X bar represent? X bar represents your means or your averages, right? So now we're changing something. I'm not changing, you know, your mean. I'm changing the standard deviation to this standard error, sigma X over square root of N. So, um, so let's write that. So I have the, let's do it in green, let's do it in green. So the uh, distribution of X bar, the averages is normal, mean is 44, and the standard deviation is 18 over the square root of N, where was N? 10 students over the square root of 10. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that, I can't keep it. Oh, arrow. I can't keep it like that, right? I need to simplify it. So 44, and let's do 18, divided by the square root of N, which is 10, we'll use 5.6921 is what I got with four digits to the right. Usually I would take more than that, but I mean, it says round to four. So I would probably take more than that here, but it also rounds nicely because I have 5.6920997. So if I round that to 5.6921, it's not so bad. Um, let's do the next color. I'll do pink. Uh, <clears throat> all right. What is the distribution of the summation, right? This represents sums. So let's go back here. The sums, the distribution of sums, this should be a squiggly line, but mm, whatever, is normally distributed. We're taking the mean that they gave us and multiplying it by the sample size. So summation is n, take the mean and multiply it by the sample size. And I'll, you know, simplify that after and take the standard deviation they gave us and multiply it by the square root of n. What was the standard deviation? 18. 18 multiplied by the square root of n. So let's rewrite that. The summation is distributed normally and for 40 and then ooh, 18 times the square root of n. I got a thunderstorm going on here. 56.920. Okay. All right. So, all right, let's answer these questions. See what we have here. Um, how do I know which distribution to use when I answer these questions? If one randomly selected student is timed, so I'm selecting one, there's nothing about an average, there's nothing about a total or sum. So I'm using my basic situation here find the probability that this student's time will be between 47 and 51 minutes. So since I'm looking for probability, right? I'm looking for normal CDF. So this is gonna be normal CDF. Um, they gave me, you know, the area in which I wanna bound. So I'm between 47 and 51 minutes. So the leftmost part of my area is 47 and the rightmost is 51. Again, if you're not sure what I'm doing there, you're gonna to have to go back into my videos and check how to input this stuff into, um, into your calculator. 
And then my mean, since I'm selecting one, I'm with this distribution is 44 and 18. I have to tell it that part, right? So I'll kind of show you again here, second vars, right? So vars is here on my calculator. And you, again, I did a video going through this with my nice, beautiful graphing calculator app. So if you need to refer back to that, go ahead. 47, 51, 44, 18. I got approximately 0 0.0851, right? Rounded to four de uh, decimal. Okay, let's look at my next question. For the 10 students, now I'm selecting more than one here, not one, 10, so I'm not here. Now, is it averages or is it sums? Find the probability that their average, average time is between. So now what am I doing? Normal CDF again, the area that I'm bounding is the same. It's between 47 and 51, but what is changing 51? I'm changing the distribution. So now I'm using these values, 44 and 5.6921, right? Now I'm changing that part. So again, second bars, normal CDF, right? 47, 51, 44, 5.6921. I get approximately 0 0.1897, rounding to four uh, decimal places, right? Okay, again, how do I know which distribution to use, right? This one selected one, this one selected 10, and asked about their average time. Find the probability that the randomly selected 10 students will have a total, this is a sum, now I'm looking at the sum. Total study time less than 360. So this changes, but that's not a big deal. Normal CDF. When I do less than, right, area to the left of this value. So um, technically that goes to negative infinity. So I'm going to use a large negative number as my left bound. 360 as my right. And my distribution that I'm using is this, the sum, because they're asking about their total time, 440 and then 56.921 approximately uh, normal CDF. Oops, that's not normal CDF. Do it with me. 360, 440, 56.921. I got approximately 0 .2, 0 .0, 0 0.0, 0 0.0, rounding to four de uh, decimal places. So, you know, it, it might seem like scary at first, but it's not that difficult. It's not stuff that you don't already know. It's just a matter of which distribution you're using now because we kind of added stuff to it, if that makes sense. So um, hopefully that helped you guys with that.